Once upon a time, when magic did not yet exist in this world, a single philosopher discovered a world, the Backyard. The Backyard ruled all things in the universe. From within it, one could understand any truth or even bend the world as he pleases. The philosopher thought that in this place, a single dream may come true. That was, for the peace of mankind. He wished for it to last forever. To understand how that may be done, the philosopher creates a single robot. The directive was clear to find a path of eternal happiness for mankind. And no matter what the outcome, mankind was not to be harmed. Based upon this directive, the robot begins to study. But one day, the robot reaches a block. What is mankind? Upon further studies and research, the robot discovers the complex nature of humans. It believed it could not complete its directive until the definition was set in stone. Unable to define it, however, it came up with an interpretation. Humans have a soul. While vague, it was the only condition that the robot was able to derive. And one day, after countless amounts of research and calculation, the robot produced a most unexpected result. It was a future in which mankind, alongside advancements in culture, would remove their own will and choice from themselves. Mankind will dream. He will prize his purpose and he will love. Though the robot assumed it was those very urges that comprised the soul, it predicted that mankind would one day strip itself of any impulse. Its directive was the everlasting happiness of mankind. Nevertheless, humans shall, by their own will, one day cease to be human. With the data it had produced, the robot could derive but one conclusion. Humans do not yet exist in this world. Upon this day, it began a quest to create a life form with a soul that can never be forfeited what it believed fit its own definition of human. At that moment, mankind was no longer under the protection of its directive. Heaven or hell. Get ready to rock. Guilty Gear Exarch, Revelator, Story Mode. Learning of the robot's rebellion, the philosopher returned to the backyard for the last time. The pupils he left behind continued to await their master's return, but began searching for a way to stop the robot on their own. One chose to educate the people and help them evolve. Another thought to halt the advancement of humans, suspending them in their current state. The pupils will eventually become known as the Gear Maker and Conclave. They would call the robot the Universal Will. It was once an informational organism, but it now had become human, to understand human minds. Its original plan was to simply wait for mankind to sculpt its own demise, but Frederick and that man's interruptions would lead to its destruction before it could complete its directive. Thus, the human it became is the Sanctus Maximus Populi, Arios. Leo refuses to believe it, but Sol steps in front of it. Frederick 
何度も言わせるなお前もギアメーカーだ本当の名前は何だったかな<笑>さっきから聞いていればその第一の男ってやつが人類を危機にさらしたように言ってやがるがてめえはどうなんだギアを作り戦線を起こし今もなお何かを企んでいるしかしこの話を信じるならばギアメーカーは慈悲なき刑事からずっと我々を守ってきたことになるああ元老院もなだが実際はどうだ奴らは何をしたなぜラムレザルは死んだ僕は自分が善人であるとは言わないだが今の話に嘘はないよならなぜギアを作った軍部の介入を阻止できなかったプロジェクトから抜けることもできたはずだなのにお前はギアを作り続けたギアを戦争の道具にしたくなかった僕が作った知識共有のシステムを使えば兵器となった全てのギアに指令が出せる戦争を止められるそのためには初めから開発に加わる必要があっただから僕はジャスティスを作ったんだ大層な理由だなだが肝心な説明が足りてねなぜ俺をアリアをギアにする必要があったアリアのためだ He explains that he too wanted to cryo-freeze her and find a cure for TP infections, but she absolutely refused any future without seeing Frederick again. So he found the one answer that she would accept. But for it to happen, Frederick would have to become indestructible. <laughs> アリアを殺したんだぞアリアは死んでいないわ何ジャスティスが初めて暴走した時アリアの魂は救済できたの半分だけだったけどねそれが私アリアの半分そして私が器に帰ればジャスティスはギアではなく正真正銘の人間となって復活する彼はずっとこの時のためだけに生きながらえてきたのよ Soul is crestfallen so... Kai pulls him out of the room ソルお前の長きにわたる因縁は決して他人が口を挟めるものではないだろうお前がどんな結論を出したとしても私たちにそれを止められる力はないだが残された時間もない我々にはギアメーカーの協力が必要だだから今は少しだけでいい私とここにいよういいなうわThat man believes there will be a single opportunity to determine Ariel's and Elfelt's whereabouts, the Crusade victory celebration. Reading the report left by his convict Hammer, Kai realizes that alongside Ramlethal's remains, they found the remains of a Phalanx 9 unit as well. Kai says this is the part where he makes up his mind. In the hangar, Sin sits quietly, looking at the stars through the hole in the ship. <laughs> そうかもう一度一緒に見たかったダブルバーガーもまだ食わせてなかったなまだ一人腹をすかせてるやつがいるじゃあ行こうぜだな Inside Benman's dream an unexpected visitor stops by Axel Low waltzes in, asking for a conversation. Bedman is confused and anticipates some new trick, but Axel assures him that he just wants to talk. He explains that his power has become larger than he can handle, 
and wonders what a power-hungry person like Bedman does to affirm themselves. He just wants to see Megumi again. Bedman is surprised that he went through all this trouble just to ask that, knowing he could be killed, not knowing who Bedman is. He explains, He and his sister were born with a condition where their brains could not keep up with their thoughts, and dreams were the only place they could function. There he encountered the universal will, and gained the ability to intervene in the waking world, but his sister Delilah is still wandering the dream world. She's never seen her mother, or felt the embrace of another person. Axel is shocked at the violent lengths he's willing to go through to see his sister again. Bedman explains that there's more to it. The backyard is connected to dreams, and lucid dreams allow one to create and change imaginary things. But in an absolute world, dream and reality become superimposed, and he would be able to save Delilah and undo everything he's destroyed, allowing people to return to their dull lives. He's memorized the identity of every single person he's killed, including everyone in Babylon, and once they win, he will bring them back. He just wants a world with his sister in it. While he sympathizes with Axel, he can't let anything stop him. The pieces begin to come together. Kum taps into the power of the Divine Tree as Ariels prepares a banquet hall. Venom and Robokai travel together. Venom apologizes for pulling him into their darkness, and Robokai shares his dream to own a tangerine farm, warning him not to laugh at other people's dreams. President Vernon strikes a deal with Johnny for immunity and several other conditions by taking an incriminating selfie as collateral. In exchange, Johnny shows him his fastest ship, Gulen can be dark. Paradigm explains his plan. When Ariels meets with Kai and Leo, track her signal back to L and replace her with Jacko. Saul wonders what energy will be used to merge with Justice, surely not the Japanese. He wonders if he can kickstart the junkyard, but the gear maker says that the outrage would be far too powerful. Perhaps they could use Saint Oratorio. <laughs> ボクのせいでドンザしてしまったからね。なんとかバルムンク級まではKai asks how quickly they can get there once her location is exposed. Not everyone can ride a missile. Izuna would have been perfect for teleporting them, but they've been out of contact since Babylon, possibly due to Ariel's. Paradigm says it's all covered. Meanwhile, in Zep, Gabriel speaks to Chip, an uninvited guest in his office. He's not laughing at Chip's fledgling nation, but making grave accusations without evidence makes it hard to be taken seriously. Chip knows it's just a hunch, but going through official means at this point risks being compromised. Something he can't afford now. Chip is disappointed in the political stance Gabriel is posturing, noting that G4 is coming up, and Zep's acceptance into the UN is under review. <laughs> あ、軽々しく <笑>その後でできるだ。ふふ、全く何年も経つのに未だに異性者としての言動が身につかんのか。そうか。自分ではいろいろ成長したつもりだったけど。いや、変わっていない。その眼差しがあの時から少しでも曇っていれば、<
<laughs> In the banquet hall, Ariels appears, wearing macabre face paint. She commences the celebrations with a speech, explaining that her appearance is proof of her resolve. Humanity has won the right to survive, and it will not bend or give in. Humanity is the only species that can prove its worth. She then welcomes Kai and Leo as they approach the throne. Leo demands to know why she's driving mankind to the brink of destruction, to which she corrects. Not humans, redundancies. She takes offense to the word. Her answer is that she's programmed herself to loathe this artificial humanity. Seeing things through the same lens only led her to despise human irrationality, its self-destructive nature, and above all else, its indulgence in excess consumption. <laughs> なんだ、Ariel summons three antimatter gears to the streets of the city. Kai grips his sword, but Leo holds him back. Ariel tells Kai to settle down. Shooting a random guest, Ariels continues to describe that the source of her analysis, the reason why redundancies crave excess, is because of their longing for possibility, hope. Thus, to take everything away, she must reap hope. <laughs> Televising her reveal, Ariels detonates the entire room around her throne, knocking Kai and Leo nearly unconscious. Noticing a wound on her arm, she points the gun at Kai, but the bullet is blocked by Chip, arriving just in time. The antimatter gears rampage through the streets as civilians run for their lives, including the two children who were bullying Robocop. Alexis orders to support the city as Faust packs three syringes of his new medicine, designed to delay the antimatter collapse and explosion. He heads towards the chaos, but he's not alone. No! 
くなせっはっ手間がかかりそうだなここはいいお前は次に向かえ西欧直轄かさすがに手だれだなイルリアにもまだこれほどの兵士がいたと死より深いように。やった次はダメだあれは間に合わない Tapping into the tree's key, Kum Hae Hyun begins holding back the giant information flares, preventing eradication of the colony. Suddenly, a number of Phalanx 9 units rush to attack. Viking is prepared, and she and Nei fight the Phalanx. Just then, reinforcements arrive. Answer joins the fight. Bedman arrives in a park of ruins, wondering why the Sanctus Maximus is late. He begins casting a spell. As the same kids from earlier try to hide nearby. Suddenly, he senses Venom approaching him, but is ambushed by Robokai, who could not only evade detection, but also hear Bedman's dream wavelength. ブレイク考えたねまさかこんなおもちゃまで持ってくるって僕としてはその機械人形さえ先に壊してしまえばいい話だこれでは丸でただ死にに来たようなものだね僕は死にに来たと言ってるぞその球体には何の威力も拘束
As reality sets in, Bedman refuses to accept defeat. Thinking of all that he's done that he must fix, he absolutely can't give in to one man's sacrifice. Hearing the burden of others that he places on himself, Robokai tells Bedman that he's actually a pretty nice guy. But just then, the two hiding children try to escape, and Bedman seizes the opportunity. Robokai places himself in front of the kids, saying that even if he hates the townspeople, he relies on them, and that he can be useful to at least one person, and that makes him a member of society. He doesn't know what kind of awful world Bedman was born into, but whatever he wants to do, how he's going about it is completely wrong. He gets impaled by Bedman's spikes, but closes the distance. With a self-destruct, he destroys the bed frame and forces Bedman to awaken. As Bedman lies on the ground, Ariel's approaches. Unable to stifle her laughter at the convenience of Bedman killing himself for her in the end, she breaks it to him. Mankind isn't going to make it in the absolute world. She misled him into believing that they would resurrect the human race, but it's his fault for not reading between the lines. Bedman realizes the weight of his sins. <laughs> と思っ<笑> ここは僕が作り出した世界だ。僕が定めたことが絶対だ。どんな力も。ここでは無力だ。だが、残念だ。残りの命だ。これが全て。He turns to stone as he casts a final spell. As Ariel's teleports away, an unknown girl with the same leg markings as Batman steps into the frame. Leo awakens in the war room just as Paradigm's fears come true. Ariel's is completely masking her signal. Zappa suddenly has an epiphany and calls up his colleague Randy who modifies his global painkiller virus to broadcast aerial signal around the world. Because she's masking herself, any area where the signal doesn't show up must be her location. It works, and she's detected in the North Atlantic. The jellyfish pirates launch Gulen Kambi Dark, with Sol, Kai, Sin, and Jacko aboard. That man reactivates his old lab, standing in the same place he did on the day Japan was lost. They begin preparations for St. Oratorio. Aboard the Gulen Kambi Dark, 
April estimates 40 minutes to travel 3,600 kilometers. Back in the war room, Leo receives a call from the third king, Daryl. He was busy with internal affairs, but is ready to retake command of his fleet. Leo resists, but Daryl insists that Leo doesn't have the authority. Daryl says that he'll be objective, and unlike Leo, he won't hesitate to make the call to fire on justice, even if Sol is in the way. Under the Sanctus Maximus orders, the ships were outfitted with collider cannons with unprecedented power, but not enough for her liking to approve the final output. その話題は今やめておけ。何の話だ。あら、そのことなら私が一番。ジャンキュー。やめろと言ったはずだ。いいか。今から見な。何も考えるな。なんで？それが。それが平和だからだ。決戦の前だ。もやっとしたくない。
放っておけば幸せだったと思うの貴様らの味方になったからといって人形ではない生き続けて孤独になるだけだだからといって生きる権利を奪う道理はない As Kum and Baikin hold out for as long as possible, Jacko gets into position for Saint Oratorio. But the broken ground and chains on Justice begin to destabilize her position. The group is forced to break off to correct it as Soul stalls Ariel's with Junkyard Dog's 20 fold output. Kai also activates his Red Gear Eye. And with Sin, they realign justice. Hanabi是好奇的存在的。お前は、そんな世界で一人で生きていく覚悟があるというのか。花火は好きか。は？俺は今まで。一人であることに努めてきた。俺が<笑> おかげで俺は一人でいることを認識できた。一人じゃなく一人だ。俺の世界は何かに許された俺の自由なんだよ。だが本当に誰か一人の望みだけで存在する世界ってのは結局自分が一人であることも認識できなくなる。俺はてめ
the mission was a failure, and as his fleet of collider cannons is the last resort, gambling on soul is not acceptable. Leo objects in the name of the Illyrian Constitution, Section 3, Paragraph 12, with joint signatures from the first and second king, he can hereby be removed from his command as king. He asks Kai to sign, but Kai hesitates. He appreciates Leo's efforts, but Daryl has a point. He asks him to teleport everyone back to the ship and leave him and Sol behind. Daryl beams up Sin, Ram, El, and Kai, who protests, but Daryl says humanity needs him to go on. He fires the cannons. ジャック。<笑> As they close their eyes, the cannons never reach them. Axel Lowe has stopped time. This <laughs> Sol asks him what'll happen if he uses his power, and Axel says he knows he'll never see Megumi smile again. If he returned, she's the kind of person who would have said, it must have been a tough decision, but that's not good enough for him. The paradox is, to be the kind of person she'd be proud of, he can't abandon this world. <laughs> The fusion occurs, and time resumes as the cannon fires. When the dust settles, Justice is gone, and Sol is holding an unconscious Jacko. A barrier cast by aerials protects them. Jacko's halo disappears and her hair turns red. Aria is reborn. Back in Illyria and the colony, the Phalanx Nine soldiers drop their weapons and fall over. The flares stop. つまり、<笑>
Some time later, Sol tends to unfinished business, accompanied by Sin. He faces the gear maker, Raven, and Eno, with her back turned to them all. よく見ておけ。あれが男の目だ。喧嘩を売る野郎の目だ。ああいう目をした奴には理由なんかいらねえ。答え Guilty Gear Excerpt, Rev 2, Epilogues. Zato and Slayer reflect on the ruin of the merciless apocalypse, and the assassins being reborn, but the risk of Venom being discovered alive is a loose end that needs to be taken care of. In an alleyway in Illyria, Venom and Robokai's head are living on the streets, selling services. Venom knows his unexpected survival jeopardizes the assassin's future, so he's resentful. But Robokai tells him not to act like his life has so little value, plus he needs to make money to buy him a new robot body. Suddenly, an assassin named Two Cave and two guild members approach Venom. Feigning ignorance, they intimidate him, demanding shoe shines. Speaking allegorically, Two Cave describes a scenario in which not all guild members are on board with going legit, or worse, having to pay the price if Venom is exposed. His resolve is tested, but when a random old man hears the commotion and gets too close, Venom vows to protect the people of the city. With that, he passes the test. Two Cave hands him a message from Zato, and an envelope containing a new life. Later, we see Robokai and Venom working at their own bakery. One day, Zato stops by to check up on him. Hiding in plain sight, with a slight change in hairstyle. King Daryl hosts a party for the operations team, including Zappa, Alexis, and Randy, when a world record-sized pudding is destroyed and the blame is placed on paranormal activity, Zappa investigates to get to the bottom of the web of lies. Ultimately, it is discovered that the giant pudding's creation involved a magical contract with a demon, and all those who sneak a bite are blasted into the sky with a rocket propulsion coming from somewhere. Raven and Asuka meet to say goodbye. Raven says that the G4 is happening soon, giving Asuka a half month to complete his task. He then thanks him, noting that from here on out, his actions are his own, and he too wishes to fight the flame of corruption. Asuka admits that he told Sol to win and survive. <laughs> その右に
なぜですか我々がいずれ道を分かすことになるのは分かっていたはずああだからこそだ君に残す言葉があるとすればそれは主従の関係であるべきじゃないと思ったんだだからあれは僕なりにその友としての言葉だレヴィン・スマイルズ and asks Asuka if there were a god what would you want him to be like long ago Raven once tried playing god by helping the people of a village with everything from healing illness to toppling tyrants he was killed many times but his many returns were seen as miracles as word about him spread he visited and helped new villages traveling far eventually when things settled down He decided to return to the first village, but they hated him for abandoning them. He was blamed for everything bad that happened in his absence. He wasn't a savior, he was a repairman who went missing. Asuka asks if he's still looking for an answer. And Raven says that Asuka was the one who showed him. Something exists beyond the people's understanding that they hold close to their hearts, and when it earns their belief, it's called God. ですからどうかおっしゃってくださいあとを頼むときっとその言葉に従います私も友としてありがとうでは後のことを頼んだよ At home, Kai, Sin, Dizzy, L, and Ram are discussing what will happen now that the public will become aware of the truth. Kai expects the scandal will force them to leave. L finds a newspaper, however, that has an article about the public reaction to seeing Dizzy during the final battle in Illyria. まるで天使、いや、女神様のようだった。彼女が多い様なら、きっと神様とお似合いなのに。これを書いた人たちはみんな、ディジーさんの人間じゃないことを知って、それでも投書しています。カイさんの家族のきっと新しい世界の新しい王様たちになれます。私はそう思います。それが本当ならここにいるみんなでずっと一緒にいられますね。みんなってだって私たちはみんな家族でしょ。Sin then wonders where Sol fits into all of this. So, not that I mean, now, oh, yes, no, got an ante of window. Tashkani, so this, ne, Doshima Shoka. Dizzy, son, no, by, wa, Futsuni, or Tosan, de, in, jan, I, desco? What a statini, tot, demo, oh, o Tosan, no, no, cana. Mm, are? Oni, son, come. 何よりも恐れていた事態だ The doorbell rings Soul was right on time But when Kai gets to the door He senses danger On the other side of it Soul is looking for a fight Kai and Soul take a walk Soul asks if he's over it yet Settling the score between them Going all out 
Ty says he's not completely satisfied, but in his head, it's done, and that he's always given it his all. It was Sol who wasn't taking it seriously. ゼンジ。そこには俺の想像をはるかに超えた存在がいた。いや、あったと言った方が正しいか。一部の隙もなく、無駄もなく、油断も躊躇も恥も外分も、騎士道も慈悲もない。感情なんて介在する余地のない存
If you're into fighting games or you want to get into them, we've got a series called Get Into Fighting Games. We play them every week. We sometimes get experts on. We sometimes dive deep and go competitive, playing online. Or we get new players who've never touched games before and are trying to learn. So Get Into Fighting Games is a weekly series. It's a lot of fun. Come hang out. Uh, we've also got regular Let's Plays of a variety of different genres, a lot of classics I've never touched, or new things coming out. Uh, and then there's a weekly uh, podcast called Castle Super Beast where we just shoot the shit and talk video games. So um, that's what's usually going on. And if you uh, think any of that sounds fun, check it out and maybe give a subscribe. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. Thanks so much, everybody.